koutou e te whanau, ni bula, malo, kia orana. My name is Fire Beck and welcome to our art segment. Today we are looking down and this builds on previous lessons where we've been looking up and we've been mapping where we live. It helps us make connections with the things that we're doing. We've been exploring techniques, and materials, kōwaiō, and we've been creating a documentary diary. We've been recording different aspects of our lives for our time capsules. I hope you've been talking to your whānau about your projects and what you've been enjoying, or maybe even better, they've been doing it with you and you've been collaborating. So today, what will we see when we look down? The pavement, weeds, the tops of our feet, our jandals, or we could be looking down at the back or the front door, we could be looking at some wet footprints. We'll all have different things that we're looking down at wherever we are today. Now I've got some artists that I would like to show you um, in my book, and this one, uh, let me see if I can find a photo of them. This is the Boyle family here, and they were a family who collaborated and made sculptures of things that they were looking down at. This may surprise you. This picture here, you may think that you're looking at um, some soil um, that maybe have been prepared for some crops. You're actually looking at an artwork that was made from fiberglass and has been painted. Isn't that amazing? Here's another one that they made together. It's called Study with Curved Curb, Parking Line, Metal Plate and Cobbles. Again, it's been made from fiberglass and it's been painted to look exactly like what they were looking down at. Here's another one. Study of a red sandstone cliff. Again, it's painted fiberglass. So, it's just incredible to see how they've replicated what they've been looking down at. Another artist friend of mine that uh, I went to high school with actually, Sam Walker, um, has done these pictures behind me and the way that he um, created these was by using his foot and some tyres. And you can see this one, there's tyre tracks through it, you can see his foot mark and even a boot mark here. It reminded me of looking down so I thought I'd show you this today. This one's called Intersection and sometimes the title of an artwork can give us other ideas about the meaning behind it. Quite an interesting piece in this one over here. What else can you see when you're looking down? In our mapping session we looked at uh, doing some rubbings and we're going to return to those again today. And again, um, we are looking at kākono, texture, papa, surface, heta, drawing because when we're doing rubbings, we are making drawing. So I've got a couple of things that I was looking down at uh, earlier today. A um, couple of placemats that I was eating my meal off, and a stone that I've uh, collected when I was in the South Island. So I thought I could do some rubbing, show you how to do some rubbings using those things. You might need help holding your paper down. Um, so you hold your paper down, press it if you can, and then I use my pencil on the side and wiggle it from side to side and see what kind of texture comes up when we do that rubbing. This one wasn't as clear as I'd like it uh, to be, but then we're exploring and seeing what textures we can make uh, from the things that we're looking down at. Let's try this placemat. So that comes up quite clearly in comparison to the other. Makes some pretty interesting marks. I like that papa, that surface. Let's try our rock. Some of these things can be a little bit difficult. You've got to, uh, maybe you might need a couple of people to help. <laughs> so this one's just really showing up the rock, that, uh, the surface texture, kākano of that rock. So that helps us to um, see and draw and describe the surfaces that we can see when we're looking down. The other surfaces I've looked at have been concrete, uh, my deck, a paver that was um, 
downstairs and this is the top of my lawn mower. I thought I'd give that a go when I was looking down and mowing, mowing the lawn the other day. So that's uh, one way that you can record looking down. You might also be looking down at some flowers in your garden. Some putty putty. Here's a putty putty I made uh, with my class. Um, I think it might have been last year actually, that's why it's so dry. They're a bit greener when they're fresh. Um, so here's a, an example of some flowers. Now these flowers, um, I wanted to add a bit of colour and if you don't have paints at home, um, and we talked about this on, an, on another session earlier, um, there are ways of making dyes using um, scraps, vegetable waste. Um, so after I had been making some beetroot and peeled off the skins, I actually saved them instead of putting them into my compost and I boiled them in a pot of water and beetroot gives you this beautiful burgundy red colour um, and doesn't really take a lot of boiling um, because it's such a strong plant. Um, the bottom of your onion bag you'll see some onion skins instead of putting those in the compost you can boil those up and get this beautiful vibrant orange colour and then I had some waste off my um, spinach and uh, I blended those with some water to get that vibrant green colour. So you can see I've used them um, for my putty putty here, my flowers. Um, you can also see some striations that I've tried to put into the petals. This, take, this took uh, quite a few goes to get because the stains are quite light um, so when you paint them on um, if you want to get stripes in, if I tried to do that while it was still wet, you can't do it, it won't go on. So you've got to wait for that to dry and then build up um, the layers over top. So just work into those. It takes a bit of patience, um, but really well worth waiting. And you could actually do a few um, so that you're working on a few while you're waiting for the others to dry. I've just used a bit of um, printing paper here which is quite light and um, the dyes can make your paper go a bit wrinkly so if you've got an old cereal box um, or some packaging, open it up and use the inside and then it would be less likely to go crinkly. Just on my vegetable dyes, another segment we did looking up and I started that but I didn't finish it so um, I used vegetable dyes, I used some old makeup that I found and then I also found some pastel and, and I worked into it with some pencil. So um, if you can see that, that was the, the finish of that because I didn't have time to finish it in that last segment. So those are just some ways to add colour uh, using scraps from home, things that you won't be using otherwise. And as you can see, they add beautiful colour. So I'll give you a quick demo on how to draw a putty putty, a flower, just a, a simple way of drawing a flower. You can start with a stalk, uh, maybe put in the shape of the flower head, a little bit in the middle. If I divide my circle into segments, that will give me a good structure to be able to place my petals evenly. So working from our centre circle, just easily adding in some petals into those segments. Easy way to draw a putty putty, a flower. Then if we get our eraser we can just work in getting uh, rid of our construction lines. And then we can start adding our detail into that sketch. We might even want to add some leaves. And then you could go back in and use your um, dyes to colour that up, or whatever you have at home if you want to add colour, add it in there. Um, what else could we do? Looking down, this time of year uh, there's some beautiful coloured leaves, particularly if you live somewhere in the South Island. Beautiful ray of um, colour with the autumn leaves as the trees are turning. Where I live in Northland, uh, we do have some, but probably not as many as you in the South Island. So you could uh, collect coloured leaves and make a beautiful pattern using those. That might give you an idea. 
So what environment do you, what do you have when you're looking down in your environment? And what could you make out of those things? What other creative ideas could you have with what is around you? Hopefully you can have a corridor with your family and explore some ideas. You might do some of the ideas that I've shown you, or it might stir you to do something totally different, and that it would be amazing as well. So, once you are confident with the idea of looking down, you can push yourself a little bit further. Try looking down at other things. I've drawn a picture here of um, a dog. Remember our word tirohia, perspective. Quite a different perspective looking at this dog, looking down at the dog, and you can see some foreshortening happening where the body gets smaller and the head gets larger. Have a go at doing something like that if, if you are able to and you need that challenge. I would just love you to be creative and I hopefully some of the things that I've shown you here today has stirred your creativity. I would love to see your work, so if you could send a picture, text it in using the title Daily Diary, uh, text 5811, or the web information is info at hltv.co.nz. Sorry, .nz. I would love to see your work. Um, so, Remember today we are looking down, looking at the words kākano texture, papa surface, hita drawing and recording what we're looking at when we look down. So I hope you've been able to fill up your daily diary, your time capsule, recording different ideas about your life and who you are and that you've been enjoying the process each time. I uh, hope you've been practicing a lot. I know that I need to keep practicing to get better and um, really develop my ideas as an artist as well. And I know you'll be doing that at home too. So I hope you've enjoyed today. I've enjoyed presenting it and I'd love to see you next time. So fa kakete manoia. Wow!